Zon 3 Moon Tower. In the years leading up to NASA's moon landing, their Soviet counterparts had great success with probes, satellites, and planetary exploration. One particular probe captured an image some theorists hail as early photographic evidence for extraterrestrial life. In 1965, Zon 3, while en route to Mars, captured some of the first detailed images of the moon's far side, revealing its features in unprecedented detail. Though this was a significant achievement, it was only a secondary objective for the Zon program. The primary aim was the development of remote-controlled robotic devices for planetary exploration. From approximately 10,000 kilometers away, Zon 3 captured images covering about 70% of the moon's previously uncharted side. Before contact was lost, 25 of these images were transmitted to Soviet scientists. One of these images ignited a Pierce debate, which among some still rages today. It allegedly showcases an alien spire, a massive tower estimated to stand three and a half miles tall. Ufologists have championed this apparent structure as evidence of extraterrestrial civilization. Ufologists have also claimed that the monolith may be just one of many that have been discovered and potentially concealed by space agencies around the world, indicating an advanced spacefaring species. The spire structure is even theorized to serve as a launch pad for extraterrestrial spacecraft or as a sophisticated communication device. Mainstream science has rejected these claims, maintaining that the shapes seen in the images can be explained rationally as geological formations and craters, or simply an artificial anomaly in the photograph. However, some still aren't satisfied with this explanation, particularly on conspiracy forums, where theories of extraterrestrial life are exchanged. The Zond program continued to be a success, with Zond 5 carrying the first terrestrial organisms including two tortoises around the moon and back to Earth. The Surface of Venus After the Sun and Moon, Venus is the brightest object visible from Earth, a barren, desolate world that's both familiar and eerily alien. From 1961 to 1984, as NASA prioritized its Apollo moon missions, the Soviet Space Agency conducted the less publicized Venera program, aiming to unravel the mysteries of Venus. Throughout this period, numerous probes and landers were launched to gather data and capture images of this enigmatic world. Of these, 13 probes successfully penetrated the Venusian atmosphere, with 10 managing to land on the planet's surface. While the success rate might not have met Soviet aspirations, it denoted a remarkable accomplishment. These were the first human-made objects to enter another planet's atmosphere. What most perplexed engineers and researchers was that after successfully landing, the probes would soon encounter abrupt, catastrophic failures. Their operational lifespan ranged from 23 to 120 minutes. On December 15, 1970, Venera 7 entered the Venusian atmosphere. Unfortunately, its parachute malfunctioned, causing it to plummet for 30 minutes before crash landing on Venus at 38 miles per hour. Remarkably, it survived long enough to transmit data revealing a surface temperature of around 900 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure analogous to being more than half a mile underwater on Earth. Venera 7 became the first spacecraft to soft land on another planet and the first to transmit data from there back to Earth. Venera 9 would be the first device to return images from another planet. It became one of just four to ever do so successfully due to the conditions of the planet's atmosphere quickly rendering the probes useless. The rare images reveal a bleak world of cracked rocks, arid plains, and hostile desert. Later probes produced sepia-tinged, wide-angle panoramas at the surface. More advanced probes were then sent, which measured wind speed using microphones and attempted to map the surface using radar, but all ultimately succumbed to the harsh environment. The data from the Soviet landings offer vivid insights into Venus. The planet's sulfur content would create a repulsive rotten egg odor. Its rain, acidic enough to dissolve human flesh, and the consensus is that the harshness of the environment precludes the existence of familiar life forms. Yet, in 2012, Russian scientist Leonid Ksansvomaliti published a paper suggesting that images from the 1982 Venera 13 probe hinted at potential life forms. He believed that certain objects, which appeared mobile, resembled a disk, a black flap, and even a scorpion. These, he proposed, 
might be creatures that evolved to thrive in Venus's extremes. Sun Familites claims, while stirring conspiracy theories about classified photos and potential signs of extraterrestrial life and structures, were met with substantial skepticism from the broader scientific community. While we can be reasonably certain that the terrific heat and crushing pressure on the surface of Venus is responsible for the short lifespans of the probes to have landed on it, it remains surprising that so few should have managed to transmit a single image back to Earth. There remains a great deal to be learned about Venus. Moon Flashes On January 16, 1986, an amateur astronomer in Louisiana named Terry Atwood witnessed a bizarre cosmic phenomenon that has only recently been explained. Gazing through his reflector while searching for craters on the moon, Atwood saw the moon appear to flash. One flash would be unusual enough, but Atwood observed two distinct rays of light. Although Atwood's observation is the most renowned, similar events have been documented as early as the 1960s, mystifying astronomers for decades. The light has been characterized by its flowing, sparkling quality. It stretches approximately 10 miles across the lunar surface, displaying reddish hues, and can last for about 20 minutes. Only in early 2023 was a plausible explanation for the flashing moon mystery offered. It may be that the moon is reflecting light from the sun when both are oriented so that the light hits the lunar surface at a highly specific angle, bouncing off a crater in the Hypatia region and magnifying the light. It is also now thought that the secondary ray of Atwood's flash may result from the same light glinting off volcanic glass contained within streaks on the surface of the Hypatia region. This phenomenon shows just how little we really know about the vastness of space, even of those celestial bodies that are right on our cosmic doorstep. Tabby's Star In 2015, astronomers captured a mysterious display from a distant star located 1,500 light-years from Earth in the Cygnus constellation. Named KIC 8462852, and colloquially known as Tabby's Star, the enigmatic star has sparked fervent speculation in the scientific community due to its perplexing and unprecedented fluctuations in light. These irregular dips in brightness, as much as 22%, seem to defy conventional explanations, causing some scientists to propose fantastical theories, including the construction of an alien megastructure known as a Dyson Sphere around the star. Proposed by British astrophysicist Sir Freeman Dyson in a 1960 paper, a Dyson Sphere is a hypothetical megastructure enveloping a star to capture its energy. Such a colossal construct would allow an advanced civilization to harness nearly all the energy of its host star, solving virtually any energy needs. The construction of a Dyson Sphere would represent a Type II civilization on the Kardashev scale, a hypothetical scale measuring a civilization's technological advancement based on its energy consumption. The peculiar light patterns observed in Tabby's star could not be explained by planetary transit or intrinsic variability of the star. This has kindled speculations about the existence of an alien megastructure like a Dyson sphere around the star, modifying its light curves in strange and unpredictable ways. The hypothesis suggests that the anomalous dimming of the star could be caused by the construction of such an alien megastructure, with its opaque and irregular components obstructing different amounts of starlight at varied intervals resulting in the erratic light fluctuations observed. While the Dyson Sphere explanation thrilled many, the scientific community remained largely skeptical. As Carl Sagan once said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Further observations and studies leaned away from the alien megastructure theory. In 2018, researchers proposed that dust particles in orbit around the star were the most likely cause of the dimming. This dust unevenly distributed, could lead to the irregular light patterns observed. Despite the more natural hypotheses that have been presented to explain the unusual fluctuations in light from Tabby's star and others like it, none have been accepted widely. The possibility of them being caused by a Dyson sphere is distant, but a possibility nonetheless. Lost Tapes of Apollo 11 Among the many recording devices installed on Apollo 11, designed to capture a man's first steps on the moon in 1969, was a slow-scan television system. 
This separate system was intended to record and back up all transmitted data, including video, as well as telemetry information. Because of NASA's real-time low-resolution broadcasting of the landing, and the fact that so many copies were made of the actual broadcast, the preservation of the slow-scan TV system backup tapes was not considered a priority, and the tapes were lost. In the 90s, a number of still images surfaced that depicted the original broadcast moon landing footage, but in a far superior visual quality. It was suspected that these may have been taken from the backup tapes, and in 2006, a group of retired NASA employees began a search for them. However, they had no luck. Later in 2006, it came to light that in the early 1980s, NASA's Landsat program, which sought to gather and archive satellite imagery, had suffered a shortage of blank tapes. NASA admitted that, in all likelihood, the lost tapes of Apollo 11 had been erased and reused. In 2019, the controversy received renewed attention when a one-time NASA intern auctioned three of the original tapes he had bought at an auction of surplus government goods. NASA clarified that these did not contain slow-scan, high-quality footage, but, quote, video that had been converted to a format that could be broadcast over commercial television. No material that hasn't been preserved at NASA. In its confession, NASA is admitting fault, and it seems the lost tapes will never be seen. What other space mysteries should I explore? Let me know in the comments. <laughs>